All right, it's March, the weather's warming up, the big fish are going shallow. NPFL pro Rob Robleski's here with me today, and he's gonna show you the five baits that he uses to put trophy bass in the boat. Okay, Rob, coming up on March, big girls come out to play, they're moving shallow. What are the best baits I need to be throwing to put a sure enough lunker in the boat? So I like to throw big baits this time of the year because yeah. you just said um, fish are getting ready to do pre-spawn. They're mm -hmm. moving up. They're going shallow. They're actually cruising the banks. They're trying to get any bluegill or big shad or gizzard shads at that time of the year. So I like to throw a mag draft or the hangover six cents. Um, the two different things about these baits is that the mag draft has the hook underneath, yeah. um, which I'm not uh, opposed to it. Um, but again, it still catches big fish. Uh, but the key to throwing these mag drafts or throwing the hangover or any swim baits is the gear ratio on their reel. If you throw a lighter gear ratio, like a six to four or a five to four, right. the purpose of that is you don't want to retrieve this really fast. You want to retrieve it slower. Very slow. It's all about the tail thump. Okay. So the slower the retriever, the better it is. And especially in the early months of the spring, yeah. they're really not completely active. Like they want to chase. They want something slow enough so they can attack it. Okay, so this is not a reaction style bait like a crankbait would be. Yeah. So they're going to get intrigued, follow it up. Are we fishing that high in the water column, low? I mean, how do you throw one of those? So typically I'll throw it about 20 to 25 pound test fluorocarbon mm -hmm. with one of these. Um, I like to reel it slow. I kind of like run it up the bottom or especially if it's dirty water. Because yeah. you don't really, you can't see, you know, unless you're using your forward facing sonar. Um, but if it's really, really clear water, you want to keep it up. Okay. You want to keep it visible. Um, if you're sight fishing for them, it's really good to go on it, uh, to chase those bass, throw it in front of them or from a distance and kind of reel it up to their face. Yeah. And they usually attack at about 50% of the time. What are we targeting? Are we targeting like blow down structure docks or you can just fan cast it? Uh, you can fan cast it. Um, this time of the year, I like to throw against timber. Okay. Um, timber releases a lot of warm water. Same thing with like if you have a, an area that has a dock and has a boat ramp in the back of it, those boat ramps that lead into the water generate a lot of heat if the sun is beaming on them. Okay. Down here in the south, we got a lot of rocks in our lakes. Same thing. You know, those rocks warm up like yeah, off a point maybe? Yeah, off a point. Yeah, it's really good to throw it off the point. Um, maybe a little bit off the point. Mm -hmm. uh, then again, it, it depends on what the clarity of the water is. Yeah, so we're back to that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, the dirtier water, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to see. So I like to throw like a bright color, like a white, or like the Sixth Sense makes this one crazy color. Um, this really, really looks good. Yeah. When it's dirty or dirty water. It got that kind of chartreuse. Looks like something I fished for muskie with one time. So that, that's a big bait. That's a big bait. So this is going to get you big bites. Yes. And, and, and necessarily, you're. you're you obviously want to get a limit when you're catching fish. Yeah. But if you go ahead and bang limit first thing in the morning, if you want to just chase big fish all day, I wouldn't I wouldn't put any rod up against I mean, this is what I would throw 24-7. Yeah, so but that bait. would be a good one to get a kicker on. Exactly. Okay, good. So that's our that's our target species, these big kicker ones. What's the next bait you're throwing? Um, everybody, if they knows me and they follow me, I like to throw a jackhammer, um, yeah. a chatter bait. Um, I got three different types of colors that I like to throw. My number one I like to throw is the gold blade or silver blade, a sexy shad color, three eighths or a half ounce jackhammer. I like to pair that up with a fool's gold um, slimmer swimmer by Bruiser Baits. It's a good looking bait. Uh, this is my number one go-to bait that I throw all the time. And any lake that I particularly fish, whether it's Georgia up in the Great Lakes or even in Okeechobee, for instance, um, it, you're, you're trying to cover water. You're just trying to find those, those high um, percentage fish that will attack that bait. So covering the water with the jackhammer is always a plus. Um, like I said, I like to throw a gold when it's dirty water, when the sun's up, or when it's really, really clear water. I like to throw the silver blade. Um, also, the chartreuse skirt yeah. as well with dirty water really, really does well. And especially this time of the year, now that the water's starting to move up, it's still cold, and the fish are still in that lethargic stage, um, I like to throw a red crawdad. Yeah, jackhammer, and I like to pair that up with um, our Avenger um, by Bruiser Baits with okay. this tail. You can basically rip it up. Do whatever. So you really like the just, Bruiser Baits for the trailers I'm yeah. seeing right here in this. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, good looking stuff. So the uh, dirtier water like that, that's what you would use? The dirtier the water this time of the year, um, when it, the water's really cold, you're still getting those cold fronts. Um, this, is awesome. this is an awesome bait. I was using 
it a lot of times when I was over in Logan Martin, I did catch a few good sized bass with this as well. Um, but like I said, my go to bait will be the sexy shad. Okay. Um, with the gold blade um, or the silver blade. Silver blade and clear water. Yes, sir. Let's just say if it's cloudy. Which one would you throw, a gold or a silver blade? I'll throw the gold if it's cloudy. If it's cloudy. Sun, sunny days, you're going with the silver blade. Yes. Okay. And clear water. In clear yeah. water. Yeah. All right. So we've got the big swim baits. We've got the jackhammers. What's another bait you throw? So it's – everybody likes to throw jigs. Yeah. I know jigs is a big thing here in Georgia or mm -hmm. anywhere in the United States. Um, but this time of the year, again, the bass are moving up shallow. They're going to be in the back of those docks. So – you want to be able to skip a jig. I like to throw the True Grit jigs that we that obviously Danny makes here. Um, but I pair that up with uh, two hey, different... Thanks for the shout out. Uh, no. no problem. <laughs> uh, I do like to pair those up, again, with the Bruiser Bait, uh, the Avenger of this color particular right here, which is like a Christmas PBJ color. Yeah. And this one is strictly a Christmas color. Um, this is very, very basic bait. I mean, I have a couple of tricks to it. So I like to bite the thing in half. Right. So this is basically a twin tail grub kind of bait. Basically. Right? Okay. And it's just kind of like a chunk. Yeah. And you just tie it up right there. And it's just a little bit smaller. It's not a very long profile. You want a little bit smaller. Again, this time of the year, you're, they don't want to actually chase. They want something slow. So the smaller the bait, sometimes it's a little bit better. Just kind of go a little more finesse in a way. Yes. Even though it is with a jig. You can, yep. do, that, you can do that same thing on a half ounce jig, three eighths ounce jig. You like to shorten up. I like to shorten thing. it up. Yes. What would be the conditions between? Um, so was that one of the? That was more of a twin tail kind. Of, oh, that has the crawl thing. Okay. The crawl that, yeah. And the Avenger is a little bit different. It's a little bit bigger, yeah. uh, but it's a skinnier body. Right. It's flat, um, so your hook to uh, hook ratio is going to be a little bit better than something a little bit thicker. Then again, I do like to throw this with the crawl or with the jackhammer, and I like to pair this up with the crawl that. Again, you like to cut these as well. That was getting ready to be my question. So you use that just more like a chunk. Half and just use it as a chunk. Okay. Yeah. So that gives you a little bit longer profile. That I was going to ask you, what makes you decide whether to go with the Avenger or the more standard, you know, twin tail type crawdad? Is it um, water conditions or what do you? No, think it's, it's it's either or. I don't really think it's. I don't really think it makes a big of a difference. Uh huh. Um, they're they're going to look at it. They're going to eat it. Whether they're going to eat it or not. I don't really think it makes a big of a difference. I just like to throw, I have two different ones tied on. Right. Two different trailers. You know what I mean? Whatever they're hitting. That's Something to trick hitting. them up. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to you gotta throw different things to try to get them to react. Okay. Makes sense to me. I see two more baits on the table here. I see a buzz bait and I see what looks like to be like a, is that a lipless? Lipless crankbait. Right. So obviously, February, this time of the year, and even March, early in the spring, when it gets cold. I like to throw the lipless crankbait. Arc makes absolutely awesome hard baits. Um, this is the LP58. It's a little bit bigger. Um, I like to throw the little smaller one, which is the LP38. Mm -hmm. It's just a little smaller um, rattle trap. Um, and usually the smaller profile baits this time of the year, they, they tend to bite a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, but you still can get a lot of good action and a lot of good bites with the with the little bigger crank or I'm sorry, lipless crankbait. Yeah. Rattle trap. So let me ask you this. So how do how are you just reeling it? Are you yo-yoing it? What are you doing with that? So I have a couple different ways of retrieving it. Um, I like to throw this with about 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon. Right. Um, usually if you're fishing shallow water, you don't want it you don't want to keep the same retrieve over and over. You want to okay. change it up, let it sit, drag it, reel up, pick up your slack, give it a couple yo-yos, a couple twitches. You want it, especially if you like you're fishing grass and you're ripping it through the grass. It's always good to give a good rip yeah. to it and stuff like that. So, the the lipless crankbait's been around forever. It is, it's still one of the best baits out there. Uh, it still catches a lot of a lot of fish. Um, like I said, you can throw it in in, in rocky points. You can throw it in um, sandy flats. Right. Uh, in between boat docks, parallel them to boat docks. Um, that's primarily what I would do and, and how I would chase those fish. In March. Okay, so, so it seems to be like it's a very, uh, what do you want to say? You're able to use it in a lot of different applications. Yes, a lot of different applications. And again, I like to throw that gold, black, uh, the gold body with the black top and a little orange on the bottom. It kind of just relates a little bit like a crawdad in a sense. And then obviously you can never go wrong, especially with, with clearer lakes, especially up here like Lanier, Notley, Chattoog, uh, Blue Ridge, uh, like a like a sexy shad or ghost minnow type of color, mm -hmm. 
um, just because it relates to a lot of the bait fish that I have up here. Okay, makes sense. And now one of my favorite baits, the buzz bait. I'm telling you, the buzz bait is 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 is, is a, for, to me it's it's like a forgotten bait in mm -hmm. a sense, but. This time of the year, you can always get a big kicker, especially first thing in the morning. Now, if it's a, if it, you know it's gonna have a sunny day, this bait will only work like the first hour of the morning, mm -hmm. um, just to get that one, one or two big bites. Right. Um, if it's really cloudy day and it stays overcast throughout the day, you can never go wrong with throwing this all day long. And again, this is more of a shallow water bite. Fish are moving up. You can fish this in dirty water. You can fish this in clear water through stumps, through laydowns, parallel them perfectly. It's all about throwing at different angles and just trying to get that fish going. Okay. Well, I tell you what, that seems like a very good variety of different baits and, and whatever one is you know, accustomed to, they can do that and be successful in March. Yes, sir. You know, so if you like the big swim bait game, you got it. If you like the jigs going slow, looks like you got a little bit of everything. So I tell you what, I'm going to load my tackle box up. We'll go see if we can get some big girls. Let's go. Let's do it. Guys, hey, if you like this, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you join our channel. Click that notification bell so you'll get more future content.